everybody, Ethan here. Welcome to Hello Road. So it's time for another edition of Car Spotting by Bike in Los Angeles. I started doing these videos because I realized that I just take for granted the fact that we pretty much have no rust here. So we have a lot of cars that are just survivors, not just classic cars that you would expect to see, like Chevelles and Camaros and that kind of thing, but cars that are just still around because people have yet to junk them, they're still running, and the elements haven't ruined them. All right, so let's see what we can find. Okay, so this first one is not from the 80s and the 90s, but it's pretty rare. Check this out, a GMC Envoy XUV. So the Envoy XUV was GM's way of sort of trying to make an SUV a little bit more like a pickup truck. So the cargo area in the Envoy XUV is enclosed all the way up to the sort of that back roof area, and then it slides open. So you can kind of have this modular rig where it can be an SUV most of the time, but then sometimes you, it can be a kind of odd pickup truck. So that roof would retract and that whole cargo area was exposed. You could carry tall things. So if you needed to often carry tall things, the Envoy XUV was for you. This is early 2000s. I don't know how many they sold, but I like the fact that they tried something different here. Now, as we discovered in my last car spotting video, early forerunners are everywhere in Los Angeles. Not only do these things kind of run forever, they're pretty durable, unless you're in a rusty area. These aren't exactly known to be very rust proof, but without rust here in Southern California, so many of these are still on the roads today. So this is a second gen forerunner. I love those wheels, by the way. They look awesome. And the second gen, I think was from like 1990 to 1995, known as the Toyota Hilux Surf in Japan. Great vehicles, and they are just littered across Los Angeles. All right, what else can we find around here? All right, I spot an older Mercury up ahead in a gold color. This is a Mercury Mystique. I can't remember the last time I saw a Mystique. Now, I think a lot of people referred to these as the Mercury Mistake. Not really sure how well these sold. Now, remember back in the day, this was sort of heralded as a world car, as this was based on the European market Ford Mondeo. So in Europe, it replaced the Sierra, but here in the States, it was referred to as the Ford Contour and this rebadged Mercury Mystique. And here they replaced the Ford Tempo and Mercury Topaz. It's a very late 90s color though. Seemed like all the fun colors of the early 90s were sort of jettisoned in favor of like silvers and beiges by the end of the 90s. Check out this really cool old Mazda B2500i. I love these old Mazda pickup trucks. You know, all of these old pickup trucks from the 80s kind of look the same, but I like the design of this one just slightly better than the Toyotas and the Nissans from the era. This one's got some aftermarket wheels, not my favorite, but the front of this truck is just adorable. So this would be a fourth generation B series, which seems crazy, but there were several generations before this one dating back to 1961. Certainly don't see as many of these as I do Toyotas and Nissans in LA but they're still around. It also seems like these were really popular in sort of the sport truck scene where people lowered these, made all sorts of fun modifications to them. It's always fun to spot one of these. Oh, there's a lot of these around in LA too. Check out this old Mercedes 300 SE. The paint has seen better days, but that's often the case with a lot of vehicles that sit out in this Southern California sun for 30, 40 years. So this is a W126. I have no idea what year this is. I'm not really good when it comes to years of these older Mercedes. I think this was like late 70s, maybe like 79 to 91 maybe. Yeah, and these can still be found around for a relatively decent price. I feel like these haven't really gone up in value yet, unless it's like a really nice example but I still see these for sale for a few thousand dollars on Craigslist here and there. And if it's got a diesel engine, it will likely run forever. I've seen a few of these converted to veggie oil. Nice, I spot an old Acura Integra in the distance. Nice sort of reddish maroon color. Let's see what this is all about. Ooh, it's a four door. I don't often see these. Once again, the paint is a little worse for wear. It's got a Type R badge on it, an X Racing badge on it, aftermarket spoiler, aftermarket wheels. A lot of these got trashed, but it's nice to see that it still exists. So this is a second generation Integra. And like I said, I rarely ever see these four doors. I'm guessing they sold more coupes than they did sedans, which certainly wouldn't be the case today. Coupes are dead today. So it's gotta be like an early 90s Integra. Sad that it's in such rough shape, but good to see it's still on the road. FJ60. So this looks like it's a pretty well-loved FJ60. Probably my favorite looking Land Cruiser of all time. Got some aftermarket wheels, aftermarket bumper. Yeah, these things are super rad, incredibly capable off-road, and they just look awesome. Toyota definitely used the FJ60 as some serious inspiration when they designed the new Land Cruiser and the new Lexus GX. 
Now here's a vehicle that I've actually been considering purchasing, a Suzu Trooper. Now these, I think, spanned from like 81 all the way to like early 2000s and only had two generations. So this is a second generation Trooper. This is the facelifted version of it. So maybe early 2000s, I'm not quite sure. It could be late 90s, correct me if I'm wrong. I like the two-tone paint here. Also extremely capable off-road. You can see that it's got slightly curved in headlights. That indicates that it's a newer facelifted version. Yeah, very cool. I like these things. I know some of the earlier ones had locking differentials. I don't know if the later ones did, but still pretty capable off-road. Up ahead is my favorite generation Honda Civic. Now this is a fifth generation Honda Civic and it was sold from 92 through 94, something like that. Early 90s. This one needs some new paint. It's got some cool aftermarket wheels though. They almost look like Corvette wheels. I don't know what they are. Yeah, to me, this is just my favorite generation Civic. An iconic shape. Yeah, it's kind of blobby, sort of very round and kind of looks sort of like a bar of soap, but I really dig it. Yet another Isuzu Trooper. This is a second gen. You can see it's the pre-facelifted second gen. The headlights look a little bit different, but check that out. I didn't realize these things came with windshield wipers on the headlights. I don't know if that's aftermarket or not. That's pretty neat. This one's been outfitted with some off-road tires, LED lights, roof rack. Very cool. I love these things. Just a box on wheels. Obviously not as boxy as the first gen, still sort of a rounded box on wheels. Pretty neat. Oh my gosh, what is this? Here's another thing I haven't seen in a long time. Mazda MX-3. So this is a rare find. This is super cool. I've been looking to buy one of these for a very long time and they almost never come up for sale. So this is a very weird looking car. It's kind of got bug eyes in the front there. And the MX-3 is known for having one of the smallest V6s ever produced. I don't know if it's the smallest, but it's definitely one of the smallest, a 1.8 liter V6. Now I'm pretty sure this one does not have that based on the wheels. And I'm just guessing that this probably has a smaller four cylinder. This is just such a cool find. It actually had four seats in here, if you can believe that. Actually cram two people in the back of this thing. Back in the day when car makers were still making fun, weird, lightweight sports coupes. So this Jeep Cherokee is an XJ and these were sold from like 84 all the way through like 2001. This is definitely one of the newer ones. It has a facelift. The taillights are a little bit different. The headlights and the grill are a little bit different. But once again, a very, very capable machine on dirt. A lot of these things get modified to tackle some serious terrain. And this along with like the Ford Explorer back in the day, were pretty much responsible for SUVs making a huge surge in popularity. People love these things. And that's why they sold this platform for so very long. Okay, up ahead I spot a GM vehicle that I don't really like the design of, but we'll talk about it. Check out this Chevrolet Cavalier. I always thought it was funny because pretty much every single Cavalier from this generation, from this facelift that I've ever seen, that center taillight piece never lines up with the taillights on the left and the right. It's always a little bit higher or a little bit lower. So this is a third generation Cavalier and these were produced for about 10 years from the late 90s or mid 90s to 2005. This was towards the tail end of that, I believe. I didn't mind the earlier versions of this generation, but when they did this facelift, I feel like that really kind of uglified it quite a bit. Especially in the front, it kind of gave it this weird sort of underbite look going on. Yeah, it's just not a good looking vehicle. Previous years looked a lot better. Right across the street is a very cool looking Dodge Ram conversion van. And this is technically a third generation Ram, although not much changed from its introduction in 1971 all the way to its demise in 2003. They were still very similar, but I still see a lot of these on the road here in Los Angeles. Oh, I spot an early Nissan or Datsun pickup truck. This is pretty cool. It does say Nissan on it. So this is a Nissan 720 and this was sold in the US here from I think 80 to 86, something like that. So this was a predecessor to the Nissan Hardbody. This one's a king cab, so that was kind of nice. You can fit almost another person in the back there. And check this out, I feel like this has the same wheel and tire combination as that previous Mazda we just saw. Also no bumper on the back like that Mazda. It's kind of a popular thing to do to these trucks to give it a little bit more of a streamlined look. Pretty cool looking truck. Needs paint like a lot of these old cars do here in Southern California, but it's a nice find. Now here is a rare sight. Got this Toyota AE86. So this here in the States was known as a Corolla. Now, depending on the trim, it would be offered with either a 1.6 liter single overhead cam engine or the 4AGE dual overhead cam 1.6 liter four cylinder. That's the engine that you wanted back in the day. And now it's sort of become iconic, very high revving, fun engine. I've got one in my Chevy Nova twin cam. This one's got Trueno badges on the front. I think the crazy thing is, even though this is in rough shape, the values of these have just 
skyrocketed over the last 10, 15 years. So even one like this is probably worth like 15 grand, but they are very, very cool cars. I spot a third gen F body in the distance. This black Camaro, the gold wheels, 5.7 liter, IROC Z. So if I were to guess, this is maybe like an 87 Camaro. I'm not really quite sure, but just based on the graphics here, but I could be wrong, somewhere around there. And like a lot of these third gens that I see parked on the streets of LA, this one's in very rough shape. The paint is trashed. The wheels are very nice. Somebody's put an aftermarket hood on there with a hood scoop. I don't know if this is fiberglass or not. It's got T-tops though, that's pretty sweet. All right, this is cool. I haven't seen a street parked Ford Pinto in a very long time, several years probably. This is a very nice sort of mustard yellow color. Looks like it's in pretty good shape. I'm guessing somebody still drives this car. Now, some people have called the Pinto one of the worst cars of all time, but I don't think it's that bad. Yeah, it did have some issues with fires and recalls and litigation. They sold a lot of these things and they were kind of the car that was needed at the time during the fuel crisis when fuel prices were through the roof. Very cool to see one of these. What is this? This is some sort of Mercury. It's got a tow hitch on it. Did somebody use this to tow a trailer at one point? It's a little rough. Gotta admit, I do not like these wheels. One thing that I find very hilarious about cars from this era is how small the passenger area is compared to the rest of the vehicle. And this isn't even a very egregious example, but yes, here the hood is maybe longer than the passenger area. Not exactly efficient use of space. Given the wheels and tires on this thing, it looks like it was set up for drag racing. It's in pretty good shape. The front is a little bit bashed in, but generally speaking, it's in pretty nice condition. Looks like it was repainted at one point. Once again, I'm not a fan of these aftermarket wheels, but I just like the fact that it exists. Somebody cares for it. Starsky and Hutch replica. Look at this Torino with an extremely rusted out roof. Somebody had an idea there to make this look like the Starsky and Hutch car, but I guess I really don't know. Was this a California car with this much rust? Having vinyl tops on cars can really allow rust to form on the roof, but this is something else. I haven't seen anything like this, especially here in California. It seems like it would need so much work to get it back into shape. If it were me, I'd probably just cut off the roof and just make a Starsky and Hutch convertible. Obviously somebody right here is a fan of old F-Series trucks. I usually see a lot of old Chevy trucks on the road here. Not as many F-150s, surprisingly. Looks like they still run. They're in, in pretty rough shape, but I dig the patina. Okay, so here's something I haven't seen in a very, very long time. So it's kind of crazy to think that this is a ninth generation Thunderbird because this one seems so old and it was already on the ninth generation by the time this thing came around. So early 80s, like 83 to 88. These were really kind of sleek cars for the day in an era when cars were still kind of boxy. This definitely had some sort of smoothed out lines that wasn't super popular back then. You could also get these as a turbo coupe. This one's definitely not that. And as you can see, this vehicle is in pretty rough shape, but I kind of dig the patina. I might actually just drive this as is. But yeah, these are really cool looking cars. All right, check out this white Honda CRX. And upon closer inspection, it appears as though somebody used a rattle can to paint this thing. There's overspray all over the trim. There's overspray on the tires. They didn't mask anything off. I'm not gonna judge what people do with their cars. That's fine. This vehicle has definitely seen better days, but I'm glad that it still exists. Somebody is still driving it. So this is a second gen Honda CRX. So from 88 to 91. They also have this as a CRX SI, which is a pretty quick little car. Only two seats in these things, so they're a good car to have if you don't have that many friends or you don't want to drive anybody anywhere. Yeah, it's rough, but it's very nice to see it. Now here's something I don't see very often outside of a car show, two Supros parked next to each other. Got a second gen here on the left and a third gen on the right. And I always kind of thought I was a bigger fan of the third gen, but seeing them parked next to each other, I really do love the squared off lines of the second gen. I think that might be my jam right there. I don't know if these are both running and driving. They seem to have a lot of cobwebs stuck underneath them. But once again, like a lot of these cars, I'm just glad that they haven't made their way to a junkyard. And wow, look at this. Parked over here in the corner is a Cadillac Eldorado. And this is an 11th generation Eldorado, if you can believe that. So this was one of the really, really downsized Eldorados compared to the very long, very massive Eldorados of the past. I think it's a pretty cool looking car. I remember seeing a ton of these back in the day. Now this is an e-body platform car. So that's a platform that's shared with the Buick Riviera and Oldsmobile Toronado. Out of those three cars, the Toronado is the sickest looking. It looks so awesome especially with those hidden headlamps. That's the one I would go with. 
Now here's something you don't often see, aside from like a Jeep Wrangler or a Ford Bronco, is a two-door SUV with a hard top on the back. This is an Isuzu Rodeo Sport. I have to look this up, but it really looks to me like an Isuzu Amigo. Did they change the name from Amigo to Rodeo Sport, even though they didn't change the vehicle? But yeah, apart from Wranglers and Broncos, this is a class of vehicle that doesn't really exist in the US anymore. There's a Camaro right in there, but it's flanked by two Ford probes, one in white, and one in purple. And actually, it looks very similar to the purple one that I had. I had a boysenberry metallic Ford probe. I don't know if this is boysenberry metallic or if this is wild orchid, but this is a sight that you don't often see because most of these things have just been sent to the crusher. They're hard to work on, not exactly reliable, but they are super cool looking. But yeah, it's just very cool to see a couple of these things in existence. I was pretty sure I had the only purple Ford probe in Los Angeles, but I guess I was wrong. There's some other pretty awesome stuff over here, this AW11 MR2. It's seen better days, the paint is a little trashed, but again, these things are awesome. Got that legendary 4A GE engine under the trunk there. It's a mid-engine car. Super cool basket weave wheels. This is a vehicle that I would like to own one day, but these have just skyrocketed in value. They used to be super cheap. You could get them for like 500 bucks, a thousand bucks. And now even one like this that's in kind of rough shape will probably command like north of five grand at least. All right, well, I think we saw some pretty awesome stuff today. I was really excited to see two Ford probes, especially a purple one. It doesn't make me miss Ford probe ownership, though. That wasn't exactly the best experience of my life, but it is very cool to still see them on the road. Well, I think that's going to be it for today. If you like this video and you want to see more like it, please consider subscribing and hitting that bell icon. If you want to help support the show, please buy a Hello Road t-shirt at helloroad.tv shop. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you're well, and I'll see you soon.